Aloha, I'm Daniel Jamario, founder and executive director of the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School here with Kaylin Castell. I am the co-founder and school chancellor of the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School. And we're here to share what has just taken place here on the Big Island over the last week. This is kind of going to be a recap of our latest intensive, uh, the Advanced Night Sky Cosmology at the Turning of the Ages over here on the Big Island of Hawaii on the Kona side at a, an amazing retreat center called Hali Kai. And we wanted to share some of the discoveries and some of the experiences we had at that event. Uh, this is to, be, to begin a new um, a tradition in the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School to give a recap uh, as to what we came up with and, and, and also to get a sense of what you all missed. <laughs> a fun time. <laughs> um, we um, were at this uh, Bali style retreat center right on the ocean, right on some uh, lava, uh, right next to a great beach that I think you had an experience on the first day, quite amazing. Would you like to share mm -hmm. that? Yes. Um, I got there the day before people were arriving and um, uh, had the opportunity to swim with the dolphins. They came right into the bay. They were there for several hours and uh, I got to see that I got to be with them as well as I uh, got to see a um, spotted eagle stingray, I think was what they called it. Um, which is a very rare um, sighting that was a bit, just a huge gift to be able to be with the dolphins and, and the magic of, of the bay there. Yeah. Um, we had a, again, a group that uh, had come in from uh, all over the country. We had people from far away as Pennsylvania and Ohio. Washington, D.C. And uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And uh, three from the Bay Area in, in uh, California. Northern California. And then we had six days of uh, classes, as well as other kinds of um, offerings. Um, we had uh, opening up the first couple of days um, some wonderful teachings from cultural practitioner Kalani Souza, who was sharing with us about the Hawaiian moon calendar, as well as uh, other aspects of um, uh, pre-Alihi Hawaii which was a, a wonderful way of uh, uh, getting, setting the tone for, for our time. Um, and then we went right into the classes. Um, the main objective of this particular intensive was working with the night sky, the cosmology of the turning of the ages, the galactic alignment, the difference between signs and constellations, uh, understanding in the sky, experiencing in the sky how these great cycles work. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of the project was integrating, le first learning about and then integrating into shamanic astrology the Hawaiian moon calendar. But yeah, um, the part, one of the parts that I got to bring was my understanding of the moon cycles at, and how we've been working with them, and um, not from the traditional phases that most people are familiar with, but what we actually observe in the sky and creating a different understanding of that and the Hawaiian moon calendar it turns out is also based on their actual observation of what they're seeing in the sky. So it was um, an opportunity for us to see how what we were coming up with and what they've been doing for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years here were um, the similarities and giving us a deeper understanding of the, um, how to work with those phases. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the following YouTube um, we'll actually be in more detail about the discoveries we made about the Hawaiian Moon Calendar, uh, and that will feature our newest graduate. Uh, we had our uh, had the opportunity to, to have our first certification, uh, the 41st member of the school, um, the, the first one in Hawaii, Liz Dacus, who will be with us when we share the details and the, the discoveries of the Hawaiian Moon Calendar. And that was, so that was one of the other great features of our event was a, a certification ceremony on the lava under a, a, a waxing moon right at Galactic Center. So we had the, this wonderful moon alignment that, we, that was featuring one of the main uh, uh, issues we were dealing with, which was what happens at the galactic alignment. And the moon was at its furthest extreme south at that point. It was a very auspicious night in order to do that uh, graduation. 
But the it, interesting thing I wanted to talk about here, um, as far as uh, what really excites me about these kinds of events, is that I had gone to this particular spot on the Big Island, um, oh, maybe two years ago, and I had shown to me a petroglyph that was right on the lava. And the stories, the intimations of the stories, were that this was a petroglyph that was associated with navigation. You could even call it the Great Navigator, but at that point I wasn't aware of alignments and I didn't really understand other aspects of the site. It is, however, what inspired us to create an event there. In all of our events, particularly when we go to uh, places outside, you know, places in nature, we're able to work with the sky directly, the sacred connections between the land and the sky. Um, there's a, a way in our groups that we allow the whole group to connect in and to make contributions. I think every time we've been to a place like that, whether it was in Nevada, whether it was in Scotland, Ireland, other such Peru. places, Peru, that there's always, there are always other members of the group that find stuff that, that there was only that initial seed that was there that I, I may have seen or you may have seen, and it unfolded just like that. Mm -hmm. Not only was this a, a remarkable petroglyph, in fact, I looked at books of Hawaiian petroglyphs and there's none other, none, no, none like it, and it shows this petroglyph of a person with an outstretched arm pointing due west, surrounded by interestingly placed holes in the lava. Kind of like little cups. They fill up with water, little cups of water. Rather reminiscent of um, the cup markings in, uh, that we've seen in Scotland and, and Ireland. Uh, quite amazing. And we had it as a class project to try to see what other alignments they could find and it turned out that it was due west and there were cup marks that marked the solstice points. This was a sunset point, so everything was west. There was even a um, birthing stone mm -hmm. area that uh, the women in the group I think very um, intuitively confirmed that's in fact what it was. Uh, so that was a, a very exciting thing that happened and I uh, think the we're, we're, we're showing you some of the, uh, the, the shots we, we took of that site. So that original invitation to our group to be there turned out to be, it was the real thing. Just the thought that comes to me is mm. that, it, you know, the pictures can't do it justice. It's when you're standing <laughs> there at the edge of the ocean and you align, you know, you see how these alignments happen with the, this cup mark with that, with like the one that's way in back that's, you know, goes way out into and aligns up and, and then just that the feeling and the sense of it all is pretty powerful um, beyond anything that the pictures can really convey. Um, yeah, really. So it's just so exciting to actually see it come to life like that. And for the group, uh, after we took the group out there every day, um, everyone in their own way went out and was with it and did their own tuning in or research or however they were called to, to connect with it. Um, so we had actually, a, there was really only one thing that, that was a, a bit of a challenge was that um, uh, Madame Pele once again upstaged an event that I had planned on the Big Island. Um, 91, in 1991 we tried to have a, a total solar eclipse event and a huge, huge weather system came in. We never even saw it. This time, um, uh, the volcano went into a different stage of eruption. And after we were told weeks and weeks of clear skies at that spot, the clear skies only happened in the middle of the night. <laughs> but fortunately, we had Stellarium and we had a PowerPoint. So we were able to actually present the material, I think, quite effectively, um, and people can now go home to their own locations and continue doing their own research on learning. Well, in fact, people, I mean, when it did clear up in the middle of the night, several people were so inspired, they went out and spent time. More than outside. several. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, they, and they were able to find the alignments and so on, so it, um, we already had the feedback that that worked for them to be able to see it that way, even though they didn't get to see it initially mm -hmm. on the sky. I'm quite certain uh, that we'll have another event over here on the Big Island at, at some point. Um, we generally like to have these more exotic locations, you know, other than at the school. 
in Arizona um, every other year. Uh, Scotland, Ireland, Big Island, um, other places. and So stay tuned to see where we're going to go next to be on location, to be able to connect with those great mysteries of the connection between the as above and the great below, as within, so without. So this is Daniel and Kaylin coming to you from the Big Island saying aloha. Ahoi ho. <laughs>